And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a small party game called Gooseberry. Now this game does not look like much. Uh, it is a five minute game, four to six players. It has a hilarious name, I think, Gooseberry. Uh, but it interested me for more than that. This game is designed by the same person who designed Koo. And Ku also came in a, a nondescript box like this until Indie Boards and Cards picked it up and published it and made it a huge hit that it is today. So I was like, huh, same designer? Let me take a look. In fact, there, this designer's booth, La Mame Games, was basically just like this nondescript booth. I almost missed it at Essen itself, but I'm really glad I got a copy of this. Let's see how it plays. In Gooseberry, you're going to be using a card with a bunch of clues on it. So, for example, this one here is food. There's four cards included with the game. There are countries. There is also school. There are fairy tales. But, obviously, that's not enough. So, on the other side of these cards, you can write in your own clues. So, here I put in uh, board game names. All right. So, each clue is going to be... There, there's going to be 16 different things that are there, and we have A, B, C, and D that are numbered 1 through 4. You're going to shuffle a deck of cards. There are two decks of cards, red and green. That's just to keep people from memorizing anything. You'll shuffle these and hand one card out to each person. Most people are going to get a grid like this. One person's going to get You Are the Gooseberry. Once everyone has gotten these cards, you're going to roll dice. So here I've rolled a 3 and a 5. So everyone will look at their cards and see 5-3 is B-3. So the clue is Uno. Now, the Gooseberry has no idea, so they just look at their card and pretend they're looking at that. Everyone then has to come up with a one-word clue about Uno. Once everyone is ready, and we've just said we had everyone put their hand on their card so that they could identify when they were ready, then starting with one person, you go around and give one clue about it. So maybe my clue is one, and someone else's clue is awful, and someone else's clue is, you know, whatever. And we all go around and give out the clue. If someone has said your word that you were about to say, just say it anyway. Say the rules. Then you're going to argue and discuss, after everyone has said their word, who you think actually doesn't know what the word is. And you can argue, and then once everyone's ready, you all point at each other, and whoever has the most fingers pointing at them reveals their card. If they're the gooseberry, they lose and everyone else wins. If it's not the gooseberry, then everyone else, uh, th then the gooseberry wins. Except, if the gooseberry is caught, which will happen often, the gooseberry then has one chance to guess what that is. And so, they heard awful, so they're like, oh, maybe it's sorry, maybe it's Uno, maybe it's Monopoly, maybe it's Phase 10. And then they heard one. And so the person who said one was maybe thinking uno is one in Spanish, but maybe that someone would think it was also the number ones here. But since none of those games are awful, that narrows it down to uno. If the gooseberry can guess the word, the gooseberry will still win. So people want to give clues that are not too obvious, but that uh, at least give one other person at the table an idea of who they are. And that's how you play. Again, I mentioned that there's another set of cards, so this is basically just a different grid. So you can see here that 6-1 is C3 here, 6-1 is B3, just to keep people from memorizing the numbers. So you can see that this game is kind of a mix of other games. It's very similar to Spyfall and games that are like that, where one person doesn't know something uh, or a game like Linky, where you are giving word clues. And it's a really good combination of those. I really like this for a couple reasons. In some ways, this is actually superior to Spyfall. Because in this, everyone is looking at the clues, and you're all looking at them. So it's not like, oh, I know what, where I'm where at this. You're looking at the clues because when you give your one-word clue, you want to make sure that it's pretty obvious to everyone else. You know what you're talking about, or at least one other person. But you don't want it to be obvious to the gooseberry. 
many, many games that I played, the gooseberry has easily been able to guess the answer because the clues were too obvious. So you have to make your clues somewhat obscure. And once you make the clues more obscure, the game gets to be more fun because then you're going to sit and argue over who the gooseberry is. Now, the production values of this game are pretty low. All right, It's just basically a handmade game, uh, which I probably wouldn't have given the time of day to, but the designer had some major cred with me. But I'm really glad I did because this is a fantastic game and I'm hoping someone else picks this up because it really needs like 50 of these sheets. You know, writing your own is cool, but it needs more that, that you can pick from. It needs probably three or four sets of the cards. I haven't played with anyone who can memorize the dice and I switch back and forth every round just to keep things hopping so you can't remember it. But that is a possibility, I guess, if you're playing with someone who's really good at that sort of thing. But the game for me was just sheer fun. It's fast, it's simple. Everyone's sitting around giving these one word clues. It, it has a very thoughtful um, aspect to it because you're sitting there and it's like password or clue or code names where you're trying to think of this, this perfect word that you're gonna say and then someone else says it. So you say your word and then you're like, well, look, that was really what I was going to say. And I was like, yeah, okay, you're the gooseberry. You were just copying. We're going to vote for you. So that's it. There's some really interesting dynamics. A meta game can certainly occur as time goes by. Inside jokes can happen. And I, I like that sort of thing. It's funny, but it's also a pretty cool game as you try to guess it. Highly, highly recommend it. Publishers, pick this one up. That's Gooseberry. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop! Boop!